in a, a NMR relaxation, let's look at what's actually going on. We actually define two liquid phases. First of all, what is bulk liquid far from the particle surface, and then surface liquid, which is liquid which is literally bound to the surface of the particle. So when a particle is actually wetted, um, the liquid uh, basically, literally, liquid molecules have to sit and attach themselves to the surface. So the first thing that happens is when that liquid uh, uh, attaches to the surface, it changes both the rotational and tra translational motion of that bound liquid, and it will be different from from the liquid far away from the particle surface. So we we describe here a particle which is orange, and what we we have now is in fact um, the the liquid. Um, molecules uh, away from the surface in the light blue and when they absorb on the surface to wet that surface they become we show them as dark blue and so what we now have we have a relaxation time of the liquid but we can also have a relaxation time of those particles that are bound to the liquid surface and the difference between that can be very large orders of magnitude and then the changes in the nature and extent of the surface in other words the, the particle size, the particle shape, the particle morphology, and the, and the particle surface chemistry, or even the rate of exchange of the particles uh, of the liquid molecules uh, can be measured uh, probing uh, the NMR relax using NMR relaxation itself. So let's look at NMR relaxation when we've got a surface liquid in suspension. There are essentially three relaxation um, uh, phenomena occurring at the same time. The first one is, of course, that for the bulk liquid, and then we have one for the surface. Now, the relaxation of the surface basically is exceptionally fast. In a, 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 in a, a large, um, high-field, high-resolution NMR, the 300, 400 megahertz, half a million, uh, half a million dollar uh, instruments, um, you can actually do um, solid-state NMR. In our case here, this relaxation is so fast that we can't even see it, so we can ignore it. But what we can measure are basically is that for the suspension and the bulk liquid, and we can see that there's difference because the relaxation, as I mentioned earlier, for the liquid is much different. It is in fact <clears throat> much slower than that for bound liquid on the in the suspension itself. Now the relaxation time changes, uh, of course, then with not just the, the particle liquid, but the 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 amount, the concentration of the um, of, of the particles there, the, the concentration of the uh, of the suspension, but also the wetted surface area. So, the relaxation of a suspension is dependent upon two factors. One is the wetted surface area. In other words, what's the particle size? And the other one is how much do we have? And we see on the right hand side the relaxation times basically decreases. Um, as the concentration increases, and this is an example here for a titanium particle dioxide. So the important thing to take over this is, is that you can make a measurement at almost any concentration, but you get the, the biggest change at high concentration. So if, you, uh, if you're able to work at high concentration, that's good. However, if you want to compare samples, then you and you and you have very short relaxation times you're better off actually having a, a slightly more dilute system because you're going to get a bigger change between the two now in the actual uh, measurement itself it, we measure a relaxation time but what we actually use is what's called the relaxation rate which is simply the um, the inverse of the relaxation time it's one over the relaxation time we can see if we take that data for the for the relaxation time and invert it, uh, we get a relaxation rate, which is a linear function of concentration. So, using NMR relaxation, it's an exceptionally informative technique. As I've mentioned earlier, you can probe both the extent of the surface area and the nature of the surface chemistry of a wetted surface, and we can look at the morphology and porosity, uh, and we can probe it in detail. And again, in, in future um, little uh, webinars, we're going to go into detail of how we do this and some of the, uh, the interesting uh, effects that you can see. NMR is also very, very useful in optimizing formulation development because, because the liquid basically binds to the surface, anything you put in the liquid, such as a dispersant or a surfactant polymer, basically will affect the relaxation.
and it ref affects the relaxation of both the bulk liquid but also the bound liquid because if anything absorbs on the surface it must displace the bound liquid and thereby will change the relaxation so we can study absorption and desorption effects we can study even stability aspects because because if you have particles that are for example sedimenting then as they sediment what happens is is that now you're exposing in the in the um, in the sensing zone um, essentially more liquid so the relaxation time will increase as particles sediment this means also you can actually uh, study uh, flocculation code. going back to sedimentation so um, and and we have in fact uh, as we'll see later a time mode in in the in the acorn area software that allows you to measure sedimentation rate uh, this also brings up flocculation and coagulation because when you when you coagulate particles or flock particles it changes the the the, the state of dispersion of the particles they come together but it also changes the nature uh, uh, um, uh, an aggregate of a particle is different from a flock and the bound water there is different and we can see the different effects looking at NMR um, coagulation or flocculation using um, using um, electrostatic means or polymeric means it also means we can now because because I've mentioned that it changed the uh, the NMR relaxation changes as a function of both size and concentration. This means it's very useful in looking at milling and grinding processes because, again, we don't need to dilute the system. You can take samples uh, directly out of the mill and measure them at that concentration, and you can measure them almost in real time so that you can follow the grinding and milling process, and you can do it with or without the presence of, of milling or grinding aids itself. So at the end of the day, uh, what you can use NMR in is everything from, um, from blue sky exploratory research and development through uh, quality control, quality assurance labs, and even into process laboratories. And indeed, um, one of the, there is a development of, of the ACON area for actually process control.